All right, we'll see how this goes. I am trying to position my camera so that it will include the entire height of this uh, signature that I am going to be folding and putting together. It is for the tall skinny size journals, so it will be 10 inches tall, and these papers are currently 11, so I'm hoping it will fit in frame. I will do my best. This is just my desk. There's no drop cloth or uh, background prettiness. It's just the real thing of what, what I do here. This video is primarily intended for the participants at our Fair Damsels Retreat in Vermont in April 2023, so it will be more specific to what we are creating with the kits that we are providing them with, the kits and supplies. But I know that there will be others um, of my followers that will probably enjoy watching this and be inspired to try this technique for themselves. The tall skinny journal size that we are providing for our retreat ladies is finished 10 inches tall by five inches wide. Standard skinny journals are four and a half inches wide, but I wanted to make maximum use of the vintage fabrics that I found. And so I had already cut them to size the, the um, 10 by 10 and a half inch panels, which allows for a uh, half an inch spine. And if I just folded eight and a half by 11 pages in half, they were going to be too narrow for a five inch wide journal cover. Therefore, I started just playing around and started manipulating and went, hey, I can do like a staggered waterfall type page system. So I played around and I came up with something that I was so pleased with and it was of course done very, very quickly and easily. So I'm sure that everyone else will find it just a fun technique to try on their own. So in my next video, I am going to show how I adhere the covers onto um, a Craft X base for, for journals, but because this piece I had already cut standard size journal, eight and a half by five and a half with a one and a half inch spine, I decided to go ahead and use it anyhow for a standard size journal cover. The ladies at our retreat, however, some of them will have this panel and all of them will have this uh, top paper for sure. So um, it, I just put them together and I loved what I saw. So they're kind of going to be um, videos that include a cover, but not for this journal and pages, but not for this cover. It's confusing, I know, sorry, but I just wanted to show it to you because that's part of my thought process is blending all these colors together. You can see the blue and the purple just are so stunning with this uh, fabric piece. So uh, just a little heads up. What I do is I just cut any size fabric, serge around the edges to the exact size of the cover that I'm gonna use, and then that becomes my journal cover just glued on to the Craftex or file folder, whatever you use. Actually, we are gonna use file folders for this style of tall skinny journal. The thing that I find is file folders are not that easy to sew through with your machine. The Craftex, it's like butter. No matter how thick it is, it's just incredible. I really can't say enough about that um, um, medium or paper type. It's like almost like leather fabric paper. You can sew it, heat it, uh, wet it. It's, it's amazing, it just takes everything. Plus it's sturdy, and yet it is soft and flexible enough to feel comfortable in your hands. So with that said, I'm gonna move the cover fabric aside. And I've just collected a, a grouping of, of papers that are all eight and a half by 11. I haven't even cut off the edges because I will do that afterwards. This is more how I select the papers that I wanna work with and what placement I put them in and then other pieces of uh, paper types, music paper, book page, um, 
tracing paper and so on. So the back side of the pages can be no longer than, I'm gonna to go to 4.75 or four inches at four and three quarter inches. So if you take that, I have my scoreboard here, so I'm gonna put that out. It keeps wobbling over there. If you take the page, flip it over, and it's going to be five inches, which would be the seven inch mark if I'm doing reverse, one, two, three. I only want it to be maximum. I'm gonna start out with three inches in the front. Actually, this one is gonna have a little bit shaved off. So I'm gonna take three and one eight inches and that's where I'm gonna score. So the one eighth of an inch allows for the paper edge here. Yours may be a quarter of an inch, whatever paper you choose. So three and one eighth, right there. And then this remaining piece can be no longer, no bigger than uh, four and three quarter inches. And bearing in mind, I am gonna trim this little tick off here. And there's your three inch, your front flap. When you're selecting the paper choice for the top, you would like it to be your focal uh, cover for your the entire signature that's going to follow after that. This side, there's nothing I have to cut off. So maximum that I can do is four inches, four and three quarters. So I'm going to have to cut it right there. I'm just going to mark that, and that's where I'm going to cut it. And I've got my cutter right here. I'm just gonna do the first one. Sorry, you're seeing my arm in the screen there. All right, so that that is my cover page. And you can see it's four and three quarter inches and the inside will be three. So from there, I just go about selecting my pages. Also, this is just page order. I'm not gonna do trim any bottoms and tops. I'm only doing the width, which is going to be the waterfall portion. I would like to choose this paper next, and you can see it's not as long or as tall. That's fine, I'm gonna flip it this way. And I'm gonna do it so that back. Now how do I want it? I'm going to do a trifold and I would like the back. And this is going to be shorter. So I'm going to do the back as five inches or sorry, four and three quarter, which is right here. And then I'm going to fold it. I always make sure my top and bottom edges are even so that if I haven't scored it quite exactly perfect or the paper is imperfect, that helps. So this is now my back page, four and three quarter inches. And I'm gonna fold this, not quite in half because you don't want to get your fold line caught up in your center. I'm gonna do like this. And that is going to become my next page because I don't want it yeah, it's going to stick out a bit. That's okay. So technically, I could flip it either way. Um, actually, no, I can't. This has to be within 4.75. Okay, so that's great. So three inches. My next page will be three and a quarter inches. That is going to be this one. I'm going to do it from this side. Three and a quarter. Score it. And then I'm going to take continue by quarter inch. Can you see? Already it's starting to take hold. Now this you may want to change if it's if it's going to block your aesthetic view here because I do like this. Remember this is going to be cut off just a tick. So I may have to move this page further along. There we go. So that it's going to be hidden. I like that better. And then you just keep going by quarter of an inch. So I will do that and come back and show you what it looks like. Thank you for watching.
I am back. What I did was I trimmed off the sides edges of the pages that I should have done earlier and it just made it flow a lot easier. So I have put together my perspective signature pages and what I'm going to do now or next is add in a few of these although I probably can do them after I trim so let's let's trim first. So I started at three inches just a tick under three inches and then I've staggered by either a quarter of an inch or an eighth of an inch just depending you can always add in papers uh, and enter them uh, crease them at the eight inch mark if you decide you don't want the quarter of an inch all the way staggered effect it does it doesn't really matter that much it, as long as they're close in color uh, but to get a, a true waterfall effect. It looks really good if they are a quarter of an inch wider as they proceed towards the center of the signature. And then after the center of the signature, this part is all uneven, which is fine, but I don't want anything wider than four and three quarter inches. So I am gonna go back in now and just trim each one to four and three quarters of an inch. And I will be back. So as you can see, they're all within under five inches. So four and three quarters, maybe just four and seven eighths at, at the maximum point. You can always go back in and trim a little bit more as you prefer. And then I would insert these pages. So making sure none of them are wider. That's only four inches, that's great. This one I will keep as my center of the signature and it is seven inches wide. So I'm gonna score at the three and a half inch mark. And because this poem, these poems are so beautiful, I'm gonna leave that as the center of the signature and the image on the back, which is March. And we are in March at the day of this recording. So just pop that in my center. And then I have a couple of these pages, a Julius Caesar book page and a music sheet. And I'm probably, well, I should decide where they're gonna go to make sure they're no wider. I'm thinking about a third of the way each. So I've got a bit of a gap here. Oh, I've got that one upside down. Sorry, it should be like this. There we go. So this one will go... Maybe following the brown or ahead of the brown. Ahead of the brown. So I can go no wider than three and a quarter. So I will make my score line, try three and a quarter. And as long as you don't press too, too hard on your score line, you can shift some of these over. Sometimes I change my mind on placement, but certainly don't cut it. Okay, that's nice, I like that. Sitting in there, and then the next one, Maybe where we transition from blue to purple again. Nope, sooner than that. Um, I think right. I kind of like it there though. I'm gonna do it here. And this is a wide one, so four inches as long as my score line is no wider than four inches. It's not going to show through as part of the side uh, waterfall effect. Also, you can certainly rip the back 
sides or even the front sides of each of these pages if you want a more rugged look. I think that'd be very pretty if we were thinking in here. I love the ripped look, but not all of it ripped. Okay, I'm liking it. So now that is this part. I have one more image. And I'm almost wondering, do I want that as my center? What I have done on some of my other Tall Skinny journals is add like a small decorative focal point right here. I'm just trying to see what I've got beside me that I can pull over without making a royal mess. Um, I'll just use this tiny one for an example. It's just an image of a little flower girl. So you could back this onto cardstock to make it thicker. You could do it higher and that's your focal point. Now, isn't that just the sweetest ever? I actually even like that. You know what? I just might use that. How cute is that? And then you decide, do you want to just leave that and have that be your opening page? Or do you want to go ahead and put something like this behind it? It is going to stick further over and affect your visual there. Or it can add to it. It's really up to you what your personal preference is. I'm going to play with this a bit before I, I decide. This can also go lower, this piece. And there you go. So there's an option. A very, very cool option. Although... I would want her sweet little face to show. So anyhow, that's my thinking. And the other thought is you take this page and it just becomes a just a regular insert in your journal. Oopsie, got an upside down one, don't I? How'd that happen? Okay. So I'm not decided exactly sure where I'm going to put these. But now this is what you can run with. And then the next thing I do is decide which pages I want to have a flip-up bottom tuck spot or pocket and which ones I want to have as a top tuck spot. So I go through my journal, my signature, and think, hmm, maybe that music page. I really like the music page to be one of my pocket pages. So then I will turn my page this way. And inch and a half is plenty. So I've got it on the bottom. So now we have scored both directions, vertical and horizontal. Pop this back in here. It's not going to show from this side anyhow because it's tucked in here. And then you just put your tags in here. Okay, so that's my first one. And then the next one I might do a top, top tuck. Oh shoot, you know what I did? I was going to turn some of these pages sideways. Well, I boo-booed. I'm going to change that and add another fold out page as this blue one is like so I'm going to change one of the purples to do the same thing so that'll happen but in the meantime in the meantime let's decide where we want our next top pocket if we even do well how about one of no oh, that's too close Hmm. I'm always bringing another page too. So for example, I just happen to have this sheet here, but it's too wide. It's got a bottom tuck on it. So 
this doesn't go at all with my theme. Although it could go in here. Hmm. Well, I'm not going to add another color. I will ponder this. I think one of these. Well, it's going to be either this one. Whatever. I will come back and share that with you when I have recorded or made the cuts and the folds and come back to it and share it with you. Bye for now. And here we have our signature ready to embellish. I've measured, cut off all the sides that were sticking out and the extra bottoms. And as you can see, my marker is a um, measurement is four and three quarter inches. The total width of our journal is five inches. So we're well within that margin. And tall, 10 inches, under 10 inches. Perfect. So I just might add this. We'll see. We'll see what the finished product is. But my main goal was to share how I choose the papers, what order I put them in, and then to score them and line them up and add um, the tuck spots in there. And it's ready to go. I decided not to change the, the um, oh, what do you call it, direction of these papers, orientation. I left them long because I like the effect of that purple in there, full length. Part of this is visual too. It, it, a lot of it is visual, but functional as far as fitting within our journal size cover, journal cover size. And there you go, simple and easy. What I will do is I will put the measurements in the description box below of each of these cuts that I've made. I usually put them right here in the bottom left-hand corner. And then the back side is just to make sure that there are no, no pages wider than four inches, four and three quarter inches. And as you can see, this is a lot of retail space for journaling on these back pages is, is amazing. And you can definitely write horizontal or vertical, whichever you choose in this style of journal. And lots of places to add your, your tags and your ephemera. So very sweet. Oopsie, I cut that one off. Oh well. And then our book page coming towards the center of our journal. And that's it. So I hope you found this helpful. I was a little bit scattered in my, my um, process here because I don't usually talk myself through it. I just cut and go and fold and score and whatnot. But anyhow, that is my technique that I've come up with. If I do get the chance to redo this video time-wise before the retreat, I will certainly do so. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're inspired. And to the ladies at our retreat, I hope you've enjoyed it and that you found it helpful and you can repeat this and make other journal signatures the way you would like at home. So bye for now.